um, to the candidates, which I think a lot of you guys are over in this area. Uh, I, I want to say this. There are moments that are super like emotionally and spiritually high in our lives. Um, and I think that that's, that can be a good thing. But oftentimes I have found in my life that that is where spiritual attacks often come. All right? The amount of times that I've taken people on like a trip overseas and we come back and they drop off the face of the earth because they're following this, this like spiritual high and they don't really know what to do with it and maybe they think that that's going to last for the rest of their life. It doesn't. It's okay to have mountaintops and to have valleys. And we usually don't live on either the mountaintop or the valley. We live just kind of at sea level. And so today is going to be a powerful moment for you today. But I, I want you to expect that in the next hour, in the next day, in the next week, in the next month, that there are going to be things that happen where you're going to, you're going to potentially even begin to doubt what has happened in your life. And maybe even you felt this this morning as you woke up and you got ready. Maybe you had a voice that said, what are you doing? What are you thinking? You're not ready for this. You shouldn't be doing this. Think of all these other things in your life. You need to take care of these areas before you get baptized. That's not at all what baptism is. And so I want to just kind of encourage you and challenge you. Don't, don't let this be something that, that pulls you away. Let it be a springboard into what Jesus has for you in this life. All right, so with that, Catherine, why don't you come join us? Catherine, you said you've always believed in God. You were raised going to church with your grandma. Uh, but when you became an adult, it, it wasn't that you like made a conscious decision to stop going to church or anything like that. But um, you just got so busy with life and raising kids that God and church didn't really make it onto your calendar. And, and in this time, you feel like you made a lot of bad choices. Where it would have been great to have had a church around you and God to guide you, but... You had kind of walked away from that. And, and when you did pray, you said it really was just about like those moments of, God, I really need something right now. So here I am once again praying instead of this like relationship that was being built. And, and all of this led you down a pretty dark path, you said. You end up being, being super depressed. Your anxieties were driving a lot of your decisions. And you felt so isolated and alone. And this led you to actually having thoughts of taking your life and how to find some time of, of like relief or change from this like overwhelming circumstance. You just were like, how do I get out of this? And that seemed like maybe your only way out. And then out of the blue, you just felt this need to all of a sudden go back to church. And, and so you wanted to find one, not only for you, but for your family as well. And you said it only took a few weeks of being at church and feeling welcomed, and feeling like you belonged, and hearing God's voice again in your life, that you knew that this is what was missing from your life. And everything after that made it like everything in your life was new. It, it, was, all, it was all new again. And, and some of the changes you needed to make were so clear to you now. And now a little over a year after turning back to Jesus, you find yourself praying all the time. You talk to God about everything. Your life and your family's lives are so different and so much better. Uh, actually, last time we did baptisms, uh, your daughter Emily got baptized. And, and today, after you get baptized, your daughter Paige is coming up and getting baptized. And so this is a whole family thing. And that, that decision to find church, not just for you, but for your family, was it's one of the best decisions you could have made. You said your, your depression is impacting you a lot less. It doesn't mean that those things are just gone. Uh, and, and when it is difficult for you to find yourself, uh, like, responding and dealing, you, you find yourself responding with your depression in a totally different way. Uh, just a totally different way. You're healthier. Your parenting style has changed for the better. You said you handle stress better. You are praying and asking for guidance from the Holy Spirit. You do this prior to responding in situations. And, and a big prayer over your last year has been your daughter's health. And as she's gone through complications and surgeries, you said everything is going so well, uh, and you know it is because of God. And she's doing so well walking, and, and, and she's healing, and it's just all thanks to God. 
and you have hope again in your life and you know that you aren't alone. You wanted to get baptized today because you know that this is your next step in your faith and in showing your commitment to God. And your challenge for people, we ask this of every person, like what are you challenging the people that are here today? So understand, after every person, you guys have a challenge. And your challenge for everybody here today that is listening is to rely on prayer and communication with God. Don't walk away from that. If you're feeling alone, pray. If you need help, pray. If things are great, pray. And when you do that, ask for his guidance, not just what you want or what you think would be best. Ask for wisdom and guidance and then trust him. All right. Aaron, why don't you come to this side? We, I, I had said that earlier, and now that's because I thought Morgan was take, gonna take pictures over here. Let me say this too real quick, all right? If there's family here, if you wanna come up at any point during a baptism and take a picture, feel free to do that. Morgan is also taking pictures nice and close. Do we have enough light over here for you? Yep, all right, so she's gonna get some pictures, but if you want video, you want anything, you're not distracting, go kind of where you want, all right? So with this, Catherine, because of your confession of faith in Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I love it. And you're actually going to stay in here because Paige is coming up next, and you're going to be part of your daughter getting baptized. We love that. That is awesome. (laughs) All right. So Paige, was it pretty awesome watching your sister and your mom get baptized? Yeah. And you're excited now for you? All right, you've been on this journey um, just over the past year and seen the changes in your mom's life. And this past year, you said you went to youth, you went with the youth group to winter retreat, and, and you said you just experienced God in such a powerful way while you were there. And ever since then, you've just been growing closer and closer to God. And you feel like your faith is stronger now than it has ever been. And you have a new boldness in talking about God and sharing what he has done and your faith in him. And so you wanted to get baptized today because you know that God has been leading you in this direction and to this step for your life. And your challenge for the people that are here today is to never stop believing in God. Even when it's difficult and you feel like you can't see him. Because he is still there and he is still with you. I love that. That's so good, Paige. All right. Paige, are you ready? Because of your confession of faith in Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right. Carly, you ready? All right, here we go. You got the UNW shirt on and everything. All right. Carly's in her first year at Northwestern, but you're not a freshman, right? Like you transferred in a bunch of credits and stuff. And so, okay, I won't call you a freshman, but you're in your first year. All right. And you you said you, you grew up going to church pretty regularly, going to religion classes on Wednesday evenings. Um, but you, you felt like your understanding of Christianity was all about going to heaven. And in order to do that, you had to follow this list of rules of like, do this, don't do this, uh, all sorts of things like that. And, and, and you didn't, really enjoy going to church because of that. Like you, you almost borderline dreaded having to go. Uh, but then when you were getting a little bit older and you had social media, you started to see other people that were 
going to church, they were spending time with God, and they were actually enjoying it. Like it was something that was fun and they looked forward to, and, and, and you felt like, man, there must be more to this then if I'm missing this. And, and so actually where you began to figure this out is you guys had a, a cabin across the road from Camp Lebanon. And you were driving there and you saw the camp. And you kind of asked, like, what is that camp? Uh, can I go there? Is that something I can do? Um, and, and so you finally, you went and you finally experienced uh, enjoying this time with Jesus. And you were just like, this, this is a big part of what I've been missing, that there's, there's just more to it than the rules and the do's and the don'ts. And, and so you made a decision to pursue Jesus with your life. And you were nine years old at the time. And for the next seven years, you continued going to your church until you were confirmed. And you kind of felt like this should be a big deal, a big moment. But what you were feeling didn't really line up with that. It just kind of felt like, man, there's got to be more. It felt like nothing changed. And you still felt empty and you were missing something. And you said the world was shaping you so much, um, like who you were was being shaped by the world, and it was not for the better. And you cared a lot about what your friends thought or boys thought or all those different types of things. And then one of your good friends invited you to youth group. And you went a few times, but then you said you started making excuses as to why you couldn't go. But you started coming on Sundays. And as you spent time at church learning, growing, experiencing God, you started to see a change. And what was once just emptiness began to change to love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And you started to finally understand the true depth of what a relationship with God entailed. And you told yourself, I want to take this seriously, and I want to live this way for the rest of my life. So between Camp Lebanon, coming to church, and youth group, you started to see that people in these spaces had what you were looking for, and you wanted it. And, and you are incredibly grateful for being raised in a home that pointed you to God. And you are thankful for the curiosity about God that the Catholic Church really instilled in you at such a young age. And, and, and since making this decision, like you had said, you are seeing the fruit of the Spirit develop more and more in your life. Your heart that used to feel empty feels full. When difficulties happen, now you just see them as opportunities to grow in God's plan and purpose for your life. And yes, anxious feelings and feeling worried like still happens, but you don't let that dominate and control you because you know that Christ is your firm foundation. She didn't even know we were going to be singing that today. And you said you want to get baptized because you feel like you have still been living with one foot in God's door and one foot in the world's. And you want to jump into God's kingdom with both feet. And so you are done living for the world, and you want to declare that publicly. And your challenge to anyone listening today is this. You are never too far gone to receive God's love. Get rid of your excuses and let God meet you right where you are at. You don't have to clean up for him to meet you. You don't need to try and earn his love. He just loves you right where you are. And, and, and be intentional in sharing God's love with others, you said. First John 4, 19, we love others because he first loved us. I love that you put that verse in there. That's so good. We love others because he first loved us. All right, Carly, you ready? Carly, because of your confession of faith, in Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Olivia. Yeah, let's give it up for Olivia. <laughs> Olivia, you said you've always been part of the church in some way. And you talked about how when you were younger, you saw people taking communion. 
And you were curious about it and wanted to do that, so you started asking questions. I love the theme of curiosity in people's stories here. It's such, such a good thing. More Christians, honestly, guys, like, listen, we need to be curious more often. We need to be curious and ask questions instead of being judgmental. And this is just like a huge thing that we need to get. And we have students that are already getting this, and I love that, all right? So you started asking questions, having conversations. And this all led to you ultimately deciding to pursue Jesus with your life and to follow him. And as you've gotten older, your faith has grown and it's gotten stronger. And when you were eight, you actually said you had a a terrifying incident when you were on a bike and you were almost hit by a truck. And you said you, you know that God was protecting you during that incident. Because you looked back and you could see the bike and the bike was like mangled and just kind of like wrecked, but you were, you were fine. And more than just during that, you said that he has always been with you. You have felt his presence through that, but just especially in that moment. And so that was just a big kind of solidifying turning moment of your life of being like, I know that God's real. I know that he's with me and that is what I want to do with my life. And so you want to get baptized today. Because you want to show that because of what God did for you, you have been made clean. And you want to show that to the world. And your challenge for people today is to take this seriously. Take all of this seriously. To follow God with everything you have. Dig into the Bible. Let your curiosity push you closer to God. I love that. All right. Olivia, because of your confession of faith in Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right. Last one for the first service here. I will say this, guys. Uh, feel free, if you have the time and you want to stick around, we have seven more stories in the second uh, service. All right, we're not just like baptizing these, baptizing these five people again and then adding two stories. We, we have seven different people. Uh, feel free to stick around for that if you want. But Katie, I, is Bruce Willis on your shirt? This is amazing. Like, I always love to see, like, I think you can tell a little bit about somebody based off of what they choose to get baptized in. All right? And so you see a lot of, like, our church shirts and things like that. But I love that. Okay. This is amazing. Such a good shirt. And such a good reason. All right. Katie, you you spent a long time praying over what you wanted to share today. And you said that your story could have uh, filled all the way from now through the end of the next service if you wanted it to. But if you want to get more of her story, I I challenge you, go and talk with her later on. You were raised in a Christian home, a Christian environment, Christian friends. We've talked about that. That word doesn't really work as an adjective for some of those things, but that's how we phrase this. And You said you were surrounded by it from the very first day, but despite that idea, life was pretty difficult and had quite a bit of junk in it. And there was a lot of abuse and trauma that went through uh, your childhood and, and your teen years and things that just really have been hard. And your parents eventually separated and got divorced and you tried to surround yourself with with that Christian community, but you felt so lost and so broken during that time. And so you continued to play the role of a Christian and tried to keep up the appearances of what you felt like you should be doing. And after high school, you actually even, you kind of made the choice you think the good Christian should make and and you went off to North Central University. It's a college in Minneapolis that's kind of affiliated with our denomination. It's where I went. It's where Emily went. And so you went and made the the good Christian choice and went to North Central University. And really 
kind of following that, you just, you were done. And you stopped trying to keep up the appearances. You didn't, you didn't finish that. You knew that just wasn't, wasn't what you needed to be doing. But through all this, you said a, a massive piece of you trying to keep up these appearances was still missing. And that was just simply Jesus. You didn't have any relationship with him. You cared about what looking like a Christian was and not following Jesus. And so you stopped going to that university and you stopped keeping up the appearances. And You kept calling yourself a Christian for a little while, but every day you stepped further and further away from God. And at 22, you married a man that you said you wanted to. It wasn't necessarily what God wanted in your life, but it's what you wanted. And this started you down a path that was filled with abuse, both mentally and physically. But you know that God was still with you through that. And, and in that time, you were blessed with two beautiful daughters. And there was a seven-year age gap between the two of them, and just a lot of, a lot of things happened in that time. And so for the sake of keeping this shorter, you said there was a lot of drinking, a lot of parties, a lot of pain, a lot of lying, adultery, and just a very troubled life. It was dark, and it was yucky, and it was messy. I love that you used the word yucky. <laughs> and you had basically abandoned any idea of God. You didn't consider yourself a Christian, and you even went as far as vocalizing that and saying, Jesus is not my Savior, and he never will be. And you thought you had life all figured out on your own. But God hadn't abandoned you. He was guiding you to a career change that would lead you down a path of just changing a lot of things and a healthier life without some of the toxic things that, that had been so present for so many years. You were divorced and you started making a better life for you and your girls. He brought another man into your life, one that would challenge you in your walk with God or lack thereof. You were blessed with two more bonus daughters through that marriage. And at the beginning of this marriage, you, you were up front with Gerhard. And you said you would never be a Christian again. And I love this. His response was simple. We will see. I'll just keep praying for you. And as I read that, I love that. You can clap for that. As I read that, I could just see like the twinkle in your eye with a little grin. Like just being like, yep. That sounds about right. I love that. Fast forward to two years ago. You were super hungover from an eventful Saturday night. And your family walked through the doors of River of Life Church. And Pastor Aaron greeted you with a big, warm, genuine welcome. And you saw some people you knew from your childhood of attending church. And it sort of felt like home, but you weren't convinced yet. You weren't done putting up a fight. <laughs> and a year later, it was a quiet Sunday morning and you felt like God was speaking to you and saying, you need to go to church. And so you listened and you went and everything that was preached by this obnoxious, annoying pastor that morning, I may be editorialized. <laughs> everything that was preached that morning felt like it was just for you. That it was just you sitting in the room and nobody else. And it's exactly what you needed to hear. And that was a healing moment in your life. And you felt the Holy Spirit stir stirring in your heart. And so a little while later, you were trying this whole morning devotions thing. And you said you were actually doing it in a cynical way. I don't even know how you do devotions in a cynical way. But that's what you were doing. And you were looking for reasons at this time as to why God wasn't real. And instead, you found yourself just saying, okay, Jesus, you're real, and I accept you as my Savior. It's because you said the word never. God has a sense of humor. When you say the word never, that's a guarantee promise right there. And you haven't looked back since. You said you are zealous for the Lord and excited for what he has for you. Part of this decision was also deciding to give up drinking, something that you've struggled with most of your adult life and really was a big part of your identity and just the way you related with friends and connected with them. But it caused you to miss out on so much of your kid's life. 
God wasn't your comforter. The glass of wine was your comforter. And now you are early on in your journey for sobriety, and God has been good. And God gave you the courage and, and is blessing you tremendously through this decision. And you said that you've seen a change in your family and in your marriage. And even the fact that things that you used to be okay with, and now you're just feeling stirred, like that, that is no place in my life. I can't be okay with that. And all these changes. You're stepping into different roles. You're leading a life group right now. I'm in your life group. I, I love being in your life group. You're doing an amazing job. And God is bringing amazing people and amazing community around you and, that loves you unconditionally and without judgment. And so you said the freedom you feel is indescribable. And this is actually the third time that you've been baptized. And you actually were sitting there being like, there's no way I'm getting baptized again because this is ridiculous. But as you said that, God was like, this is what I want for you. All right, and so I was not going to make any type of theological argument here. I'm like, I'm, if God is telling you this, we're going here. And so you are being obedient to his voice, and I love that. And you said, make me clean, make me new. I am yours, and you are mine. I will live this life for you, my precious Heavenly Father. I love that line. And so your challenge for people here today, when you have a struggle, and you finally find the courage to give it to Jesus, he will not disappoint you. He will come through for you. I love that. And here's what we're going to do. We are going to go into this last baptism. And when she comes up out of the water and we celebrate, we're going to stand to our feet. We're going to celebrate all of them. And I love, by the way, you did not have to do this. Usually people will like leave because they're soaking wet and getting cold. And every one of you guys just are like, oh, I want to stay and watch this. This is amazing. I love this, okay? We're going to stand to our feet when we start celebrating. We are going to celebrate all five of these baptisms. We're going to go into a song. We're going to worship God. We're going to celebrate. And this is our time here together today, all right? So... Katie, are you ready? <laughs> well, because of your confession of faith in Jesus Christ, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.